Hi, we're Tomorrow Lab, an invention studio focused on new hardware technology for big brands, agencies, and startups. We create prototypes and then turn them into market-ready, manufacturable products. On Potentially Genius, we take a Potentially Genius idea and turn it into a Potentially Genius thing using components from DigiKey's massive library. All while giving you a peek into our four-phase invention process. In this episode of Potentially Genius, we're going to meet with Janelle Pereira from SparkFun and David Rogers from DECA Research. They brought us the Experimental Robotics Platform, or XRP. Hey, Janelle and David. Tell us more about the XRP kit and what it can do. Yeah, the XRP was uh, a collaboration with a lot of partners around what we wanted to see in a robotics kit. So we had professors from WPI who had been teaching robotics their entire career, and they said, hey, could you put all this on a board? Could you put this? Could you put that? And SparkFun did. They found a way to get all of the things that everybody asked for into one kit. The XRP is a complete, comprehensive, open source robotics platform uh, that, that is intended for beginners, robotics beginners, for classrooms. Um, and I, you know, I think some of the biggest features of it are that it's not just hardware, it's also the coding environment and the online curriculum. The sky's the limit. You don't just build it and it's done. You build it and then you keep building and creating. We've built one of the biggest robotics ecosystems that's out there. Uh, so we want to see what people can do with it. While on the call with Janelle and David, they challenged us to come up with a new application for the XRP that shows off all its capabilities. We brainstormed ideas including a throwing arm, having the robot take flight, or even a tow truck for a stuck Roomba vacuum. We decided to build an automatic domino layer, letting us draw a line on the floor and have the robot follow that line while setting up dominoes for toppling. This concept leverages all the elements of the kit while also creating highly interactive and iterative experiences between groups of users and the robot itself. And who doesn't love watching dominoes topple? The XRP kit comes with a bunch of sensors and motors already, but for our application, we want to add a little bit more. So with the help of our friends at DigiKey, we ordered a couple more components. A green button with an LED, a motor with an encoder, and a quick cable kit. Now that the components are on their way, I'm starting to think about how to build the mechanism that drops the dominoes. The initial plan is to have the dominoes in a vertical stack and peel them off one by one with a rotating wheel that has a tooth on it. And then we'll have to find a way to link that to a pusher that pushes them out the bottom once they land. So the first challenge we're facing is getting the robot to follow a line. There's a line following sensor at the bottom. And what it essentially is, is two pairs of reflectance sensor. And when the sensor is seeing what's next to the black line, it will be able to tell it has low reflectance. But as soon as the robot is going a little off track, it will start seeing the black line. So far, I would say the half inch tape is the best out of three, because it's a little wider than the previous two, and that allows less wiggle room for the car to go left and right. All right, so we've got our, um, our main, we're calling this the kicker wheel. It comes in two parts, and this is the pusher. This is gonna push the dominoes out the back. And on our other printer, we have the main chassis getting finished. We're gonna go laser cut some other parts as well. What I'm doing now is setting up parts for our laser cutter. We've designed this domino dropper assembly to be a combination of 3D prints and laser cuts. All the flat parts that don't have any 3D features or laser cuts just because it's faster. And also means we can make a clear window on the front, which is nice so you can see what's inside. Laser cutting is great because it lets you add flat parts to other 3D printed parts quickly. We're just going to do a quick test now just to see how well the robot can follow this line that was previously drawn. The next test we want to do is introduce multiple curves and just generally a more complicated pattern just to see if the robot can follow that line. Once we introduce the more aggressive curves, the robot's not following the lines. Uh, we think it's because we're using the set effort function, which is controlling the wheels a little bit too aggressively. So instead this time, we're going to try the set speed function 
and hopefully that controls the motors a little better. Okay, so we nailed it. We have a robot that tracks these aggressive curves really well. And we, all we have to do is just change from set effort to set speed for the motor drives. Cool, so parts, ready? We're gonna talk about parts. We have the kicker. This kicks the dominoes out of the stack. This is a cam. It drives an arm with a cam follower. The arm drives the pusher and the pusher pushes the dominoes out the back. All right, here we go. All right, so now we're gonna test it. We've got all the pieces together. We just cleaned out a little bit of like extra material here. Hmm. Oh. Just, I don't know, it's like a... Did you miss one? Yeah, it's missing one. I think it's still just a little... Stack too tight. Something catching there, but I'm not sure. Yeah, right there. Stacks caught and then... I might have just made it too tight. We found out that these motors are, are not really strong enough to uh, carry the weight of this whole platform. It probably needs wheels to reduce the sliding friction on the ground so we can move it more easily. Um, so we'll look at that and yeah. maybe even mounting it on here, but we'll see. Yeah, that could work. Um, this trailer hitch is working well. I'd like to maybe get it a little bit closer, but it might work for us for now. Cool. Yeah. At this point, our robot was struggling to place dominoes accurately. We devised this marker test, and as you can see, the accuracy improves significantly as we move the marker towards the front of the XRP platform. Therefore, we decided to integrate the domino dropper directly onto the XRP chassis. With a few small modifications to the chassis and an extension to the dropper outlet, we're ready to roll. Welcome back, Janelle and David. How have you been doing? Been going great. Great. We've had a lot of fun exploring with the XRP kit and what we can make with it. Would you like to see what we built? Yes, please. It's a line following domino dropper. It automatically follows a line drawn on the ground, places dominoes on that line, and even knows to stop when it's low on dominoes. Some other features include buttons to manually start and stop the robot, and also a high capacity domino holder. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So one of the things that we're working on is an agriculture version of the XRP. And so as I'm looking at this uh, domino dropping robot, I'm thinking of one one day that could be planting seeds as it goes. Yeah, planting seeds or pulling weeds or just anything that's like, you know, repetitive and over a long distance. It could be super cool. So Janelle and David, we usually ask, did we create something potentially genius here? Absolutely. This is definitely the most sophisticated project anybody's done with it so far. So this is going to kind of push the envelope a little bit. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our friends at DigiKey. Please be sure to visit the DigiKey YouTube channel to see our past episodes.